Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to learn about how to convert 3D motions to 2D motions in addition to a few different ways in which you can fine tune the result, including order layer, replacing images, and flipping hands, as well as motion layer key modifications. On the screen now we have a front and 45 degree facing dummy. If you hold control and click and drag on the 45 degree dummy, you can create a duplicate which will be used later. We have a number of different 3D motions in our folder here, and what I'm going to do is apply one to our front facing character. You'll see when I do that, the Import 3D Motion window will automatically pop up. We can press the play button in that window to see the dance result, and if you're happy with it, you can click Apply to Timeline to make the motion to the front facing 2D character. The motion will still be loaded in the Import 3D Motion window, but now the link between the 3D dummy and the 2D characters in the viewport is disabled. If we select one of the 45 degree characters, it won't snap to the 3D dummy motion unless we select the Activate Link button in the 3D viewport. Once we do that, we need to adjust the camera projection angle to fit the angle profile of our character, which in this case is 45 degrees. After you play back and you're satisfied with the results, you can again apply to the timeline and bake that motion to your 2D character. Let's do the same thing to the third character, only this time set our camera projection angle to positive 45 degrees. When we do this, you'll see an issue with the character's leg. You can fix this by enabling the flip body checkbox in the motion section. Once we do that and play back, the character will now perform the motion in the correct profile, but there's still a bit of performance issue with the leg. Let's hide the other two characters for now and focus on this one. There are a couple of ways we can fix this. In some cases, we can tweak the projection angle further to fix the leg issue. However, this may distort the animation in another way. In this case, it looks okay, although the angle may be slightly different. An alternate method to fix the motion is to use the lock to hip checkbox in the camera projection section. What this will do is lock the projection camera to your character's hip, so it will always view the character from the same angle. If we do this and play back, you'll see that this option can fix the issue while still maintaining the relative view of your character's initial angle profile. Once we're satisfied with the angle profile, we can then apply to the timeline. Let's make our other two characters visible now and take a look at the timeline. You'll see there is now a clip in the motion track which represents our animation. What we want to do now is drag the timeline to the end of the clip and then click on the set end frame button to set the playback range. You can then enable the loop further for continuous playback within that range. Let's take a look now at editing the layer order of your character's body parts in order to fix that issue. You can see in this pose, the layer order of the hand is incorrect on the right hand for the first two characters. Let's go to the frame where the hand is going behind the chest and open up our layer editor. At that frame, what I'll do is select the right hand in the list and then click on the Send to Front button, then select the body. You'll then see the hand move in front of the body. Note that this action also adds a layer key in the timeline. This layer change will last from the frame where the order was changed until the end of the animation clip or until another layer key is set, and in most cases you will eventually need to adjust your layer settings later on. You can click and drag in the timeline to find a pose where the new layer order may become incorrect, in this case at frame 157. What we'll do is go a couple of frames before at 155, select our right forearm in this case, and place it in front of the torso. You'll see an additional keyframe will appear in the layer track. A few frames later, we'll also see an issue where the hand goes behind the hip of the character, so what we'll do is simply repeat the process this time selecting the right hand and forearm and placing them on top of the hip of the character. You may need to do this frequently on characters who have side facing motions as the body layer order is not optimized for all motions at all angles. Let's take a look now at replacing images and flipping hands. In this section we're going to fix the backwards hand issue you see here as well as the angle of the foot using sprite replacement and hand flipping. We'll select our dummy and open the sprite editor. You'll notice that if we select our character's left foot, that there are a few different sprites we can choose from in the sprite library. In this case, at this frame where our toe is pointing downwards, we'll replace it with a more accurate sprite at that particular frame. 
You'll notice that the toe is actually a separate sprite in this case, so we'll also need to select the errant toe and replace it with an empty sprite. If we open up the 2D Motion Key Editor, you can see the original bone position of that animation remains unchanged despite the sprite change we made. In some cases, it's easier to simply switch the sprite than to move the toe bone to try to simulate the correct position on the foot. Let's take a quick look at our character's right foot now. If we scrub through the timeline, we can see that at frame 79, that the sprite on the foot could probably be tweaked a bit in order to simulate a more front-facing angle. If you're having trouble selecting the sprite for whatever reason, you can also access them from the hierarchy in the scene manager if your character is selected. Let's repeat the same process by selecting that foot and also replacing it, and then replacing the toe sprite with an empty one. A bit further down the timeline at frame 165, we can see that it might look a bit better at that particular angle to restore the sprite. What we'll do at this frame is repeat the process to restore those original sprites, and you'll see it will look a bit more accurate for that particular angle that we're trying to simulate. Let's take a look at the hands next. With the character on the screen selected, let's go into the 2D Motion Key Editor. You can see that this particular character has bone hands, which means we can use the Hand Pose Editor to adjust their positions and gestures. Notice that when we open it up, there are various keyframes in the hand facing tracks for both hands. If we scrub through this animation, you can see that at frame 90, there is a left hand flip that may not be ideal. In order to avoid this unsightly hand flip, we can simply delete that keyframe that we don't need. After we do that and scrub through the rest of the animation, we can see that the result is more ideal. However, close to the end of the animation, we'll see the right hand come down a bit awkwardly. In this case, since there are no keyframes, what we actually need to do here is make sure we have the right hand selected in the 2D Motion Key Editor, and then click on Flip Hand. What this will do is flip the hand at that particular frame so we can have a more natural looking result. If you want, you can also replace the hand gesture with any of the others from the library here as well. You can also refine 3D motions on 2D characters by using Motion Offset. In this case, we're again looking at the foot movement of our front facing character. You'll see that at a particular point, the foot rotation gets a bit weird. What we want to do to fix this again is open up the 2D Motion Key Editor and add a keyframe before the weird rotation. Note that you can add an absolute key for all the bones in the body, or you can choose to add one for the selected bone, which in this case is our foot. Next, let's go to a frame further down after the weird rotation issue and repeat the process. Now we have a contained area to modify our foot position. I'll go to the frame where the rotation is starting and rotate the foot bone to a better position. It will slowly return to the original position where we placed our second keyframe, so what we need to do is scrub closer to that keyframe and repeat the process to align the foot properly. Now you can see that the proper foot rotation is maintained throughout that entire section of the animation. There are a couple more situations further down where an identical issue will appear. So all we need to do is repeat the same process by first setting the keyframes around the issue you want to fix, then going in and adjusting it at a couple of points in order to maintain the proper alignment. Let's take a look at the arm now. In this area of the motion, the forearm bone looks a bit short, so let's add some keyframes around that and get in there to adjust it. Here's a little tip you can use when adjusting the bone position. If you hold the E hotkey while moving a bone, then only that bone will be affected and not the child bones, utilizing human IK. This is very useful in situations like this where you may want the hand to remain at the same position but the elbow to move back further. Once we finish our four key edit, you'll see it look a bit more natural. We can do the same thing for the character's leg as well. You can see that in this case, we're using the shank bone with the E hotkey for movement since we want the toe to remain in the same position. This is an invaluable method to learn if you need to do extensive motion offset editing with the 2D motion key editor. Now that we've finished refining our animations, we can enhance the look further in a couple of other ways. Since our middle character would likely be closer to the camera in this layout, what we can do is at frame one, click and drag the bottom arrow of the selection box and drag it forward on the Z axis to create an illusion of depth on our 2D plane. We can adjust the position of the other two dummies to bring them partially behind our front dancer. You can also hold the control key to select both of the background dancers to bring them back simultaneously on the Z axis as well. Finally, we can add some dynamic camera movement at the end to give our scene a look of a music video. 
All you need to do is have a simple two key timeline transition where you zoom out the camera to get a cool look like this. You can learn more about it in our simple camera movement tutorials. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Make sure you check out our other 3D motion converter tutorials to learn more about this awesome tool, as well as our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. I'll see you in the next video.